You turn in your Bible to Acts chapter 13. I'm going to talk to you today about the children of the devil. Uh, the characteristics of the children of the devil and how that they basically uh, mirror the characteristics of their father, the devil. And what are his characteristics? Very important study here. Acts chapter 13. If you study the story here, Paul is basically coming and he's trying to witness to a guy and there's a sorcerer, a Elemis the sorcerer. sorcerer. You can read about him in verse 8. I'm not going to read it, but uh, you can read about this in context here. And Paul rebukes him. Look what he says to him. This defines, I think this is the only time that the word child of the devil appears in your King James Bible, and it defines what a child of the devil is. Verse 10, And said, O fool of all subtlety and all mischief, thou child of the devil, thou enemy of all righteousness, wilt thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? Boy, there's a lot in that verse. Let's look at it. Let's break it down. Paul says, first of all, O fool of all subtlety. What's the devil back in the book of Genesis? He's the serpent. He's subtle. We'll see about that here in just a little bit. Subtlety. They'll be very soft-spoken. They'll be very nice. Well, that guy can't be bad. He's, these, are, these are some nice people. You ever talk to an Amish woman at a store? Hello. How are you? Mm -hmm. Some of these Mennonites out there and things and church building people, you know. I grew up in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania. A lot of Mennonites, oh, they're so nice. Oh, they just smile all the time. Subtlety. You go to the church building and you get these plastic preachers up there and they're, and, oh, it's so good to have you here today. What's your name? Oh, where are you from? Oh, the, 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 the. Subtlety. And why do they have subtlety? And all mischief. You know why a lot of people are subtle? Because there's a lot of mischief that they're trying to hide and cover up. Hmm. Children of the devil are that way. That's why Jesus Christ called them white, whited sepulchers. Outwardly, they appear beautiful to men. But you walk in there and, oh, oh, what's that smell? Oh, man, it smells terrible. It's a, called a dead rotting corpse in there. And I won't get into detail. I don't want to make anybody get sick, but there's things that happen to corpses that, you know, certain creatures break them down, you know, and whatever else. <laughs> we won't get into that. It's disgusting. It's disgusting. It looks, it, it's horrible. But on the outside of that tomb, it looks nice. There's a lot of people that are like that. On the outside, there's subtlety. They're so nice. They're so kind. Inwardly, mischief. Thou child... Of the devil, thou enemy of all righteousness. You know another way that you can spot a child of the devil? They'll come with that subtlety. Oh, I'm a Christian too. And all the nice things and everything else. But they're actually an enemy of all righteousness. And you'll find it out when you start to talk to them. You start to condemn certain things as sin, and hey, that's not right. You know what I found out? Lord showed me this, and Lord showed me that. And you'll see them fidget, and they'll, and they'll either change the subject, or they'll say, oh, I don't know. I guess it all depends on how you look at it. Oh, I don't know. I, I, I don't think it's okay. I think it's okay. I, you know, I, I'm, I appreciate your stands on that. I really do. Uh huh. They're an enemy of all righteousness. Hmm. But look at the last part. Here it really defines it. Wilt thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? You know the weirdest thing about children of the devil? They have one purpose in life. They won't cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord. They will follow around good preachers. They will follow around, follow around good Christians. All they want to do is pervert your ways if you're saved. To mess you up. They'll ask you question after question after question till they get you confused. They'll start to try to make you compromise your stands. Their purpose in life, a child of the devil, their purpose in life is to pervert the right ways of the Lord. And um, the world's full of them. You say, well, yeah, because we're in the end times. Uh, because we're in the end times. Uh, well, let me just show you a little book I'm reading right now. 
this book right here, Pilgrim's Progress by John Bunyan, written almost 400 years ago. And you know what? You know, if I was to sum up what this book is about, and I'll be doing a study on this in the future when I'm done reading it, but you know what this book's about? It's about false brethren. That's what it's about. Mr. Have it Greedy, Mr. He comes up with all these really interesting things, uh, piety, pliable, obstinate. You know, he comes up with all these things, and it's all about false Christians, children of the devil. Huh. And uh, the weird thing is, as I read through that book, I'm looking at it and I'm saying, I've met that type, and I've met this type, and I've met that type. In almost 400 years between when he wrote those words and where I'm living right now. And if you're saved, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You've met some people and you think, well, praise the Lord, a saved brother and sister in Christ, and all of a sudden just, uh-oh. Yeah, well, you kind of try to make excuses for it and whatever else, and then you see more and you see more and you see more and you think, oh, no. I'm trying to warn you with this study. But let's go next to John chapter 8. I'll show you another way of saying the thing of child of the devil from the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. So first we had Paul, and now you have Jesus in John chapter 8. He's basically there and he's dealing with these religious leaders, the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the scribes and all these guys that were constantly following him, almost like they're trying to always cease not to pervert the right ways of the Lord. Yeah. And what they do is in the context of John chapter 8, they're questioning who Jesus' father is. They're saying, You've, you were born of fornication because Jesus is saying, no, God is my father. Hmm. But here's Jesus' answer. Verse 43, John chapter 8, verse 43. Why do ye not understand my speech, even because ye cannot hear my word? Ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Yeah. Um, the devil is the father of a lot of people out there. And we're going, to, we're going to look at the characteristics of the devil and see what his children you know, the similarities between the devil and his children. We'll see about that as we continue. But who's Jesus talking to here? A bunch of guys outside of a bar with piercings and tattoos and alcohol on their breath, and they just, you know, they're going to get some drugs for later on, and they have a prostitute. It's not who he's talking to. Jesus is talking to the religious leaders of his day. Hmm. If you could make this a modern-day example, Jesus walks outside of the Vatican, and there's the Pope standing there. And the bunch of cardinals standing around and some archbishops and high church officials. And Jesus comes up and says, Ye are of your father the devil. What would the people have said? There's Jack Hiles and a bunch of other big name Baptists. Ye are, ye are of your father the devil. Some homeless Jewish carpenter come up and say that to some of these guys outside of their big church buildings with all the thousands gathered around them and shaking their hand and everything else. And some homeless Jew comes up you're of your father the devil. What? Mm-hmm. And, you know, put anybody else into the category, too. You know, uh, United Church or the Church of Christ people or the, you know, uh, Lutherans, Methodists, Presbyterians, any of them. The big ones, the big names, you know. They're children of the devil. I mean, think about this for a minute. Why would a man... Go off to some seminary somewhere and spend years and years, get a PhD, get a THD, get all these earned degrees, and then just stand up there and lie about the scriptures his whole life. Aren't there better ways to spend your time? Not when you're a child of the devil. You're trying to please your father. The lusts of your father ye will do. That's why these guys, they'll spend 40, 50 years as a lost man in the pulpit of a church building someplace. Why? Because that's how you damn the most people to hell. You can get a lot of people that way. And hey, if you can be big enough, you might be able to get into the seminaries to train up other children of hell so that they can go out and damn more people. Got a good work going there. 
They call it soul damning. And then they'll disguise it as soul winning. Mm -hmm. Pretty sickening. But let's look at some of the characteristics now of Satan. Okay, their father. Satan and the devil, of course, being the same being, just two different names for the same being. Let's go back to Genesis chapter 3. You can always come to the Word of God and find interesting things, doctrinal things and reproof and correction and instruction in righteousness. You'll see, does go over the same passage, you'll see it apply to different things in life, apply to different subjects throughout the Scriptures. And uh, I've been over this passage many times, but we'll see something interesting here. Genesis chapter 3, verse 4 and 5. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. Questioning God's word. These uh, preachers do it all the time in their church buildings. A better translation would be. Really? Is, that, is this God's book? Then why would you say there's a better translation? Hmm. You call it God's word, but say I can translate it better. Verse 5, For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, that then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Now think about what Satan is actually saying there. I understand the, the deception of higher learning and, in, and you know, the intellectualism and the academia system. I get it. But think about this. In the context of religious circles, what is the devil really offering people? I want to open your eyes. I'm going to take the blinders off. I want you to know the difference between good and evil. Isn't that why you go to church? Some church building out there? Hey, you're a, you're a wicked person? Come on in here. We'll teach you the difference between good and evil. And you get some pious pastor so-and-so, PhD, THD, DD, and all these other you know, degrees that these guys have, and he's up there and he says, My prayer, friend is that you will open your eyes and so that you can see the difference between good and evil. People would not say, wait, that's what Satan said. Yeah, that guy's wicked. They wouldn't say that. They'd say, oh, wow, what a man of God. Wouldn't they? Hmm. Go next to Matthew chapter 4. I don't know why you would judge the devil. All he wanted was just to, so that they could see things and, and understand things more clearly. They, he, he wanted them to be like God. Just to know the difference between good and evil, that's all. I don't think that's a bad thing, is it? Hmm. Matthew chapter 4, verses 5 through 6. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city, and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple, and saith unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, It is written? He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou douse thy foot against a stone. What did Satan just do? Hey, you know, Lord, here's a joint. You've got to try this latest type of marijuana. No. Um, here's, here's some heroin. Can I just inject it? You want, you want some methamphetamines? Hey, I got this girl. Okay, she really is interested in you. I mean, you know. Hey, you want some vodka? A little paper, brown paper bag in it. What did the devil do? He quoted scripture. Psalm uh, <clears throat> 91, verses 11 through 12. He changed a little bit. You have to watch that. <laughs> Yea, hath God said. But the whole point is, the devil shows up He's not messing around with what most people think of. He doesn't come and offer alcohol. He doesn't come and offer fornication or any of the other things that people associate with the devil. What does he do? He comes and he quotes scripture. Isn't that weird? And yet how many people would even think that way? Some guy out there, he's up there, doctor so-and-so, pastor so-and-so, you can trust him. He's a good man. How do you know? Well, he teaches us the difference between good and evil, and he quotes Scripture. So did the devil. Hmm. Isaiah chapter 14. <clears throat> Back to the Old Testament again, to the book of Isaiah chapter 14. If you've been saved for a while, you know where I'm going here. 
But uh, for newly saved people, this is probably going to shock some of them. Isaiah 14, verse uh, 12 through 14. How art thou fallen from heaven? From heaven? The devil's up in heaven? We'll see more about that here in a little bit. O Lucifer, son of the morning, how art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? It's talking about Satan. It's one of, another one of his titles. It's not talking about the Lord. Okay. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Okay. You go into some church building someplace and the pastor stands up there and he says, I just want to be like God. Or how about this one? I just want to be like Jesus. Is Jesus God? Is Jesus the Most High? Do you realize Satan just said, I will be like the Most High? I just want to be like Jesus. Hmm. I've seen a lot of people out there that say that very thing. Oh, that's a mark of spirituality. Well, be careful about that. Be very careful about that. The devil can do it, so can uh, his children. And they'll seek to pervert the right ways of the Lord. Job chapter 1. <clears throat> Book of Job chapter 1, <clears throat> verses 6 and 7. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. Sons of God in the Old Testament is always a reference to angels. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. <clears throat> Wait a second. The devil's in heaven? Uh, that's correct. Uh, the devil has to give an account of what he's doing to the Lord, and he comes in among the angels? Uh-huh. No, no, the devil lives down, down in hell. He's got a throne down there and he likes the fire and he's got a little red robe on and everything. Uh-uh, no, that's, that's a creation of Hollywood and uh, professing Christians. Okay, that like to draw in that way in comic books and tracks and whatever else. That's not the devil. It's not the devil. The devil's not in hell yet. He won't be for a long time. Well over a thousand years yet before the devil even sees the lake of fire. Hmm. So let's look at our list now. The devil wants to show people the difference between good and evil. He quotes scripture. What was the third one there? Uh, he wants to be like God. I had to remind myself there. And he's accountable to God. Hmm. And yet you'll meet people that say those things and you think, oh, I think that they're Christians. Well, uh, or they could be children of the devil that are there and their sole purpose in life is to pervert the ways of the Lord, the right ways of the Lord. They're enemies of righteousness. Hmm. They'll come into Bible-believing circles and they'll just tweak things just enough. They'll pervert it. <laughs> okay? That's perversion. Perversion is a good thing twisted. Okay? Okay? And that's what these people do all the time. Why do you think there's so many different denominations? Why do you think there's so many different types of people and flavors of Christianity? We all have our own truth. No, we don't. There is only one truth as revealed through the scriptures. And that real truth, the real truths of scripture will line up with real true science, not oppositions of science falsely so called. Uh, you can prove the word of God with the real true laws of science. This modern junk that was mostly created by the Jesuit order. You can study that out. Uh, all their different branches of science that they've created. Um, those things contradict the scriptures and turn people into atheists. But the real true science lines up with this book. But these people come out and they'll say, well, we have our opinions. You have your opinions. We, we do our thing. You do your thing and whatever else. Don't judge me. I won't judge you. The whole thing. And you know, it, 
I understand you have to be careful because there are some people that have they've gotten saved and the Lord hasn't revealed certain things to them yet. So you come in with humility and, and you try to talk to people. But when you see this stubborn, we're not going to change. Uh-oh. Hmm. Go next to Revelation chapter 12, verse 9. I'll show you the verse of Scripture here that says that Satan and the devil are the same being. I mean, there are some people that are so ignorant of Scripture, they don't even know that. And, you know, I'm not trying to put anybody down because there are some people that are newly saved and just very much babes in the Lord. Uh, the Babies, in other words. Um, they might not get it. So if you want a Scripture that says that Satan and the devil are the same being, here you go. Revelation chapter 12, verse 9. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan, called by the two different names there, it's the same being, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Two things to note from this passage here. Number one, how many people does he deceive? The whole world. How does he do it? With alcohol? With drugs? Violence? Fornication? He deceives the whole world with Religion with good people that mean very well. I just want to be like Jesus. I, I can read the scriptures. I can quote the scriptures to you. I want you to know the difference between good and evil. I'm accountable to God. God judges me. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing to take note of. The second thing to take note of, which I kind of referred to in Job chapter 1, is that, that Satan is in heaven. He isn't kicked out until an event in the future that hasn't happened yet. If anybody tells you that Revelation, the events of Revelation took place in the past, they're lying. They're one of Satan's children. <laughs> okay, the events of Revelation did not take place. I mean, look at the, the different judgments, you know, and things. A third of all the trees burn up. When did that happen in the past? Well, it's symbolic. It means, you know, no, it's not symbolic. It's literal. <laughs> all right. The ocean's turning into blood. When did that happen? Don't fall for these liars out there that preterist is the main system of belief that does that, that all the events of Revelation took place in the first century and John was speaking poetically or something. Nonsense. Absolute nonsense. All right. This is a future event that has not occurred yet. So that means when the body of Christ gets up there to heaven, we will see the devil there. Hmm. Hmm. But we won't see his children. <laughs> kind of an interesting thing there. One other pl place of scripture to go to here, 2 Corinthians chapter 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Very well known verse of scripture. Second Corinthians 11, verse 13. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, full of all subtlety and mischief, hmm. transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. <laughs> Look out for anybody today that calls themselves an apostle. The charismatics are filled with this stuff. I'm an apostle. You know, I, I, I'm apostle so-and-so. No, you're a devil. You're a child of the devil. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. You say, wait, I thought he was a dragon over in Revelation chapter 12. Yeah, but he can transform himself into an angel of light. Huh. Why? Because he won't cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord. And he has to transform himself into something that looks righteous and holy. He will do it. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. God will judge them according to what they've done. Why? Because they're an enemy of all righteousness. These people, and I've met a lot of them over the years, um, and I've read some of their writings and things like that, um, they will come out and they will have some of the most holy, righteous pasts that you've ever seen and heard and whatever else. I remember uh, reading the Michael Pearl, you know, and Debbie Pearl and things like that. 
Um, and it was all, you know, oh, we were pure up until the time of our marriage. And, you know, they didn't look at pornography. They didn't, they didn't even kiss till they got married and whatever else. And then they get married and write sex manuals. Okay. And I'm thinking, all right, uh, how does that work? <laughs> there's a problem there. And there's a lot of other things there in that, in that couple that I would just say, you might want to stay really far away from them. Oh, but he uses the King James Bible and he does a lot of good things. Kind of like the devil? Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm just going to give you some real practical advice here as we end this study. Um, some of the ways that you can spot a child of the devil, right? Um, they will brag about certain standards of righteousness, right? And I'm not saying you need to have a filthy, horrible, dirty life or whatever in order to truly be saved. You don't. Try to get saved, you know, as young as you can and not mess around with the lusts of the flesh. But the whole point is you will fall, you will mess up and things, whatever. But these people, their whole, um, everything about them is all about their holy standards that they have and whatever else. And they'll talk about that. And as soon as you start to talk about the sins of your past and what the Lord has showed you as a result of that and how the Lord has changed your life, you will see them get extremely uncomfortable every single time. I've seen it so many times with these people. Oh, well, you know, well that's good that you came out of that. And, and, and then they'll, they'll, if they do that, they will start to speak down to you. They'll do that. Well, I just wouldn't understand what it'd be like to go through what you did there. I'm not trying to judge you or anything, but I've just, I've never experienced anything like that. I remember this plastic preacher I knew years ago and, um, and, you know, I was asking him about, you know, heavy metal and things. Did you ever listen to that? No. You know, did you ever let, do this or do that or, you know, whatever? No, no, no. I think I was one of the biggest fakes I'd ever seen. You know, it's a child of the devil. And uh, I brought up Peter Ruckman to the same pastor. And he said, he just, it, all of a sudden his, his countenance just changed. And he said, I hate that guy. Well, Ruckman's got his issues, but to, for a guy to say I hate him, a pastor to say I hate him, kind of weird. And I know why he hated him, too. Because Ruckman's a little bit too strong on this book here, and that pastor wasn't. Hmm, hmm. So, and Ruckman will tell the truth about some things. Even when he's messed up, he'll admit, you know, yeah, church buildings aren't in the scriptures, and, and there's some other problems with this teaching or that teaching and whatever. Yeah, but children of the devil... It's not that way. One of the quickest ways that you can spot a child of the devil is to start talking about how your life changed. The changed life. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. That's why I've done a lot of studies with that banner behind me with that verse on there. 2 Corinthians 5.17 Children of the devil hate that. They can't stand that. They're all about perverting the right ways of the Lord. They're all about trying to justify their sin and say, well, you know, I can't prove any of this stuff from true biblical science or from the scriptures themselves, which is, you know, more important, of course. They, I can't prove it, but I've always done this. Um, we, I, I think a little bit's okay, and, and, you know, and they'll justify themselves. Again, I've seen that thing down through the years. Um, and... Like I said, you know, if you ever want a really interesting study when you are saved, um, Pilgrim's Progress, <laughs> it is amazing. The types of people that he describes in here nearly 400 years ago, and you will run into these same people and they will say almost word for word what he's saying in here today. <laughs> it's incredible. So just wanted to put this study out there because, like I said, I've, I've run into this, these, these, uh, people that profess to be Christian and um, they can be really nice and very soft-spoken and very kind and whatever and things and, and you know there are certain things that they'll really brag about and whatever to make themselves look really good and holy and and uh, church building people are, are among the most you know that, that are in the child of the devil category um, they'll brag about well I've been to church I've, I was raised in church I was raised in a Christian home whatever that means uh, and you know they'll they'll do this type of a thing, and they'll speak down to you. Okay, they'll try. They'll again another thing about the child of the devil thing. What were they doing with Jesus Christ? 
Did they care about Jesus is what he was preaching? And, you know, they get, I mean, I'll say it this way. Did they just say, well, yeah, Jesus is this guy over there. He's just a nut and whatever else. They followed him around. Everywhere that Jesus Christ went, the Pharisees and the scribes and the Sadducees were not far behind. And what did they do to Paul? They followed him from city to city. Where's Paul at? What's he doing? What's he doing? What's, what's next? What's he, you know, what's he saying? What do these devils do with me? They watch everything I put out and they will pick it apart. Live stream on Brian Denlinger's most recent sermon. And I'm just going to go through it. I'm going to just find any little thing where I can catch him in his words and just twist it and tweak it and whatever. Why are they, what are they doing? Perverting the right ways of the Lord. That's what they're doing. <laughs> a man that is an heretic after the first and second admonition reject. If Jesus was a heretic, why did the Pharisees and the scribes and the Sadducees follow him all around? because they were children of the devil. If I'm a heretic, why do a lot of these devils out there, why do they follow me and everything? Because I'm the real deal and they're false. They're children of the devil. And they know it. They know it. And uh, occasionally, the funny thing is, a lot of these people, you know, I, uh, there's different people, you know, and they'll, they'll come out and they'll do these videos and they rebuke me from scripture and whatever else. And then I have brethren and they say, hey, guess what? We found out that the, uh, so-and-so that's been making all these videos against you. He was posting uh, wicked stuff in some other account someplace and whatever, and, or they're doing this, or they, they get caught you know, using a lot of profanity or whatever. They're fake. They're false. Mm -hmm. Watch out for children of the devil because they will appear to be very righteous. They will come in and they will try to mess you up. You have to hold to your standards. The things that you've learned, stand fast with those things. Don't let anybody take them from you. Oh, but I met this nice couple and these, these, I met this nice guy and this nice woman or this nice, you know, if you're a young guy and you say, I met this nice girl and, and we're pretty much, you know, on board with most things. But I think she's, she's, you know, doesn't believe exactly like I believe. You could be dealing with a child of the devil. Be very careful. Be very careful with these children of the devil. They come in with religion. They come in with lots of holy standards. Again, I'll give you another example. Um, somebody I'm related to, I'm not going to get into the, the details there, but uh, she was a, a pure virgin at the wedding day. Uh, not long after that, left her young husband, went out, fornicated with a guy, uh, became with child with a guy that was old enough to be her dad. Left her husband. But she was pure. She was pure. No kissing. No, no heavy petting, no anything, no, just pure at the altar there, the marriage altar or whatever you want to say. And how did it turn out? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Look out. I'm not saying you shouldn't be pure. Okay, that's a good thing to do. But what I'm saying is look out because these people will magnify that stuff. That's their holy righteous standards. There's a lot of Catholics out there. I'm just going to tell you just right up front. There's a lot of Catholics out there that probably live cleaner lives than a lot of Bible believers. More sanctified. More dedicated. There aren't too many Bible believers that will crawl on their knees and pray for hours a day. I've seen Roman Catholics. When I was down in Costa Rica, went into a Catholic, big Catholic cathedral. I saw Roman Catholics on their knees, step by step, doing Hail Marys and prayers. Another one on their knees and they'd get the whole way up to the altar so that they could pray to a little golden statue of Mary that was found in the basement down by a spring by some children. I don't remember what the name of the cathedral was anymore. And they get up and their knees were bloody. How many Bible believers do that? Hmm. Would you do it? Do you spend that much time in prayer? Lost Catholics do. You know why? Because they're children of the devil. They want spiritual power. <laughs> I mean, a little conviction there. Children of the devil a lot of times want more spiritual power than children of the Lord want from their father, God the Father. Children of the devil are willing to put their flesh down more. 
I mean, I, I understand there's Catholics out there that are just raging drunks and fornicators and whatever else, but you know what? You get some of these monastic orders and things, they will put their flesh down like you couldn't believe because they want power from their father, the devil. It puts us to shame. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Please be challenged by this. Please, you know, don't believe every spirit. Try the spirits, whether they are of God. All right, there's many false prophets out there in this world. There's many children of the devil. Um, be careful. Okay, so that's going to be it. Thank you for watching.